Welcome to my professional engagement and enterprise submission that I will be dictating. To begin my presentation, I will be starting off with my phase one, which contains the following. My first project I will be talking about would be the collaboration between the Swedish bag and the nightclub fabric. Here is all my initial gathered research. These were my initial drawings, thinking about the aesthetics and form of the bag and how the bag would ergonomically fit with the figures. I then began research on what sort of sustainable material this bag could be made from. My initial idea was for this sort of monochrome, bright, shiny effect, but it's actually not very sustainable for the planet, so a more canvas type bag seems suitable. My digital development in pattern making that was created in Procreate on my iPad and then I repeated the pattern over several times. I have then applied these patterns to my chosen outcome. For my next project in phase one I entered a Vans custom culture competition where you got the chance to design your own Vans. This was a global competition where people could vote for your designs over the five days of voting. I used my social media platforms to promote and support and encourage people to vote for my designs for those five days and got a total of 302 votes after the five days. Here is my initial research. I created a visual collage, a visual brainstorm to help me generate ideas to start thinking about what sort of concept I wanted to use on the vans. Vans is known for being quite skatery, surfer, uh, creative culture, so I really wanted to reflect this within the design. This was my development one, very bright, vibrant. I wanted it to represent a journey, which suggests adventure. You don't know where the road is leading to, but you can see sort of imagery of overnight stays, camping, a map festival tickets so to create that sort of vibe as well as the design being very poppy and bright I've tried to avoid using black lines as well to give it a more lucid feel. This was my development too. For this design I tried to be as free and as abstract as I could. My style is very influenced by pop art and sort of abstract movement so I think this truly reflects my personal expression of art and community and culture and family. The design is meant to represent family, friends, a positive bright community relationship between the characters that are drawn on there. So these were my two outcomes that I submitted and got the votes for. You can see the link to see a 3D rendered version so you get the full effect of the whole shoe. For my next project I will be talking about a Art Eat Festival of which I had a stall at in September. This was the first time I ever had a stall selling my merchandise from my Lost Artist page. The Lost Artist is my branded name. I chose it because being a freelancer you can have a variety of commissions that means that you have to adapt your style to certain circumstances so people might want different sort of stylized pieces so sometimes I feel like my style was a bit lost and you can't all trace it back to the same artist because I am really flexible in my way of developing artwork. The brand The Lost Artists is actually something that I started in my first year of university. I wanted to create um, a branded name with sort of my own raw artwork. I'm very, as I've said before, attracted to abstract, taking apart realistic pictures and piecing them back together in a strange way or an uh, abstract way. So these are my three main portraits that I was commissioned by my friends that I then asked permission if I could adapt into my own style. So you can see here the transition from realism to abstract. 
Although I want to go into character designing and concept art, I still feel like this is a part of telling narrative and telling, I think the sort of style that I have makes um, me take out or exaggerate people's characteristics in a sort of abstract alien form. I am very much influenced by the surf and skate culture um, and I really wanted to create some one-off personalised skateboards. These are skateboards that I sell through my Depop website as well as my portfolio website page. These are digitally printed somewhere else, unfortunately. I would love to be able to, in the future, screen print these by hand myself, but because of the intensity of the design, it would be quite tricky to achieve, but I hope to resolve that soon. So these are the other clothes that I sell, which are all screen printed by hand um, at the university. I like screen printing because it's a much more organic and hard labour intensity um, technique. I also think it's better for the environment. I try to get recycled clothes or organic cotton, something that isn't harmful for the planet. Here are some more examples of the clothes that I sell. As you can see, I'm still trying to keep that element of pop art, bright, bold colours, even though the print is quite, um, is one tone. Here is me at the Art Eat Festival, which is in Ipswich. Moving on to my games art proposal, which was a creative invite that I found on Tal Talent House. The brief was to create your own game inspired artwork and here was the mood board that Talent House suggested. Here are the games that I have been inspired by and their concept art. We have Jack and Dexter and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game both on the PS2. Although the mood board suggests um, human figures. I really wanted to have a look at the idea of using animals. Here is my initial development in shapes and what sort of animal I wanted to use and I really wanted to focus on an otter because I thought their bodies are very flexible and bendy so this could be quite a good one to manipulate and move about. I visited Colchester Zoo which is near my hometown in Essex where I did some quick studies of otters. I wish I had more time to develop some more so that I could really understand more the anatomy of the otter rather than just focusing on the main features. Within my concept, I wanted to do two characters fighting because that's what the initial brief suggests. So I thought, what animal would want to fight an otter? Otters are known for being hunted by Airedale Terriers. I actually own an Airedale Terrier at home, so this is my studies of my dog, Archie. Here I have started to begun some proper development in shape and concept and composition. This is my initial digital development, having a look at all angles of the character. Here I am trying out emotions and also different brushes to show a source of power um, that I can use in the final piece. Because I've sort of set this Otter and Airedale fight in a sci-fi um, environment, I wanted to create a sort of tiny planet that will be featured in the back of the um, artwork. This was actually based on an image that I took of Greenwich and um, took a pa panorama and stuck both of the ends together to create this sort of like whirling mini planet which is actually a print that is available on my website so it's based on a real place and then I've just added flash, uh, flashing lights, a glow, flying cars to sort of set this scene of it being in the future. This was my final outcome that I submitted to Talent House. Here is another brief that I took from Talent House where you had to design an inspired poster for the new Spider-Man Far From Home. This was a very quick brief and not a lot of time to develop or experiment so you were really sort of pressured just to create your initial response and this was my initial response. Within Talent House you're given these asset packs so you can use um, special ty 
title sequences or um, dates or film companies logos again here was a really quick project proposal that was given by talent house in the creative invites again this time to create poster inspired artwork for Peaky Blinders the new season 5 that was coming out which is now out I particularly like using Talent House and have for some time to get creative invites from because it gives you the opportunity to work for these sort of big companies or have the opportunity to try and win these competitions um, to get recognised by these companies. It also allows me to develop a portfolio so I may not win the competitions but at least I have a developing portfolio of how I have achieved each brief. For my Peaky Blinders one this was my final piece and I was successful in being um, selected as one of the top 100 artists which meant that I got a temporary spot on the Peaky Blinders BBC website where I got full accreditation for the artwork and a link to my website as you can see from the screenshot. Now moving on to my phase two, I will begin with a one day project, Telling Tales. Here you can see the brief below. The fairy tale that I chose was Hans Christian Andersen's Ugly Duck story. However, I manipulated the story in a sort of reversed fashion. Instead of the ugly duckling finding out that he's not ugly, he's actually beautiful, I changed the story to a girl that was already naturally beautiful but she made herself ugly because of society and because of social media. I didn't want to add much text in here because I wanted it to more visually communicate um, the ideas and symbolism that I was getting to so I created it in a quite monotone grey format so that you would get more attracted to the yellow which obviously represented the duck's bill and um, you can also see the repeated pattern of the duck on the girl's pajamas the face mask as she goes under surgery um, is all duck related I think to improve this with image 5 I could have exaggerated the features a lot more to make herself look more like the ugly duckling um, I tried to use sort of like pointed exaggerated features within the facial structure and like her feet were meant to be sort of more webbed like and more just more ugly in general. This was a one day project I really enjoyed and I'd like to revisit. This is probably my most favourite project proposal so far which was again for Talent House creating Joker inspired artwork for Warner Brothers for the release of the Joker with Jackal and Phoenix. This was a bigger commission so I actually had more time to develop my initial ideas. This was before the release of the film so we only had the visuals from the trailer to work with. Um, so these are my initial sketches. And this is my digital development. This is probably one of my favourite ways to paint. It's done on Procreate on my iPad using my stylus. So I went with the idea of piecing all the sort of different personalities um, together, showing a sort of sense of confusion and stress and emotion. And these were my final submitted pieces. You could submit a minimum of five. Onto another one day project which was rolling with it using the company Plain Lazy and applying this to a skateboard. I actually found this one day project a bit hard because Plain Lazy is a company that is known for having quite 2D flat slogan styled artwork whereas the skateboards that I develop are much more poppy and complex and intricated. Um, so I had to tone myself down and find something more simple and flat. Again I looked with the sort of surf and skate culture and thought what sort of 2D um, silhouetted shapes could I maybe simplify my work. Here is one of my digital outcomes. 
Again, I tried to move away from my typical style of making the board quite poppy, so I wanted this to make the white stand out quite a lot on a dark background. Um, and I think with this skateboard it actually allows people to add stickers, which skaters do, they like to sort of create their own sort of collage and I think the logo on the two ends of the tails of the skateboard really gives this impression or encourages people to sort of like manipulate the board themselves making it quite personal which is something that skaters like to do. Design outcome two was more representative of my style so I tried picking three 2D silhouetted um, emoji styled illustrations and I repeated this pattern over a board. I thought that the red and yellow contrasts and works really well together creating this sort of alarming popping skateboard print. For my exhibition evaluation I went to the South Bank Centre to an exhibition called Another Me. This exhibition is an annual exhibition that is there. It features artwork that is created by prison inmates and also artwork from people that are in um, mental health hospitals. Looking at the exhibition space, the first image on the left, this is what you see as you walk in and enter the exhibition. I was immediately attracted to the fact that the exhibition is not displayed on white walls. I am one for my many colours. So I was immediately attracted to how well the artwork worked against different coloured backgrounds. All the different artwork in there featured multiple colours, some was black and white and featuring single colour. Um, but no matter what piece was on what wall, it still managed to pop and create um, a visually interesting layout. For three-dimensional work, they had them on coloured plinths within each sort of colour block section. Again, the objects that were displayed in the plinth, um, you could see how they had coloured the plinth in order to what was in the box. The lighting was very sort of soft and delicate and was focused on each piece of artwork, had its own sort of lighting. So some lighting would sort of merge onto another piece of artists work but the space was very bright, colourful and really well lit. The order that it was laid out in you had the sort of more abstract and contemporary stuff as you first walk in and then towards the end you got sort of more realism artwork so right at the end of the corridor there was lots of realistic paintings that sort of were from the older generation of people making them so it started off as quite a younger audience and sort of grew throughout the exhibition. The way that the exhibition was laid out really made you, really carried you through the whole exhibition and as I said about the age thing it really took you through sort of all the ages and sort of development and you felt that within the artwork itself, the artwork developed as you went through all the different coloured stages of the exhibition. Because this was an exhibition that was collaborated by a lot of people you would have thought that maybe the artwork didn't relate to each other by itself. Um, as in, like, if it was done by two different people with two different styles, a painting next to um, a collage or a piece of 3D work, they've really curated the space in a way to make the relationship between each um, person's artwork really connect um, colour-wise, but also framing. Um, any flat 2D work was all presented within the same frames, so it kept this sort of harmony throughout the entire exhibition. There wasn't too much of a sort of messy collage of lots of different artists. It was lots of different artists that have presented in harmony together, which was really interesting to see. There was also a number of um, poems and headsets that were um, dotted around the exhibition really nicely which sort of gave you a break from all the visuals and let you listen to something um, to get in more engaged with and generally these headsets would be next to a piece of art that it related to so it was really nice to put the headset on and stand in front of the piece of artwork that it was connecting itself with. For signage and merchandising, um, all the merchandise was at the front. A lot of it was charity based work which was very interesting 
um, and it also gave you a backstory on, especially with this exhibition, of who has submitted this work and why they have and why this is important to prison people and um, people that suffer with mental health issues. Um, why this exhibition was so important for them to truly express their feelings. So I had the opportunity to join the animation students in going on a trip to Portugal to the cinema festival. While at the festival I attended lots of workshops, my favourite one being the character design workshop where I learned um, quick techniques in how to generate ideas as well as how to form formulate your characters and um, develop them properly. Here are all the exercises initial drawings. I think with concept art and character design what I'm scared of is not being able to generate quick enough so these exercises really helped me get my brain going, uh, just get quick initial rough sketches on paper and I am reminded of these techniques that I can apply in the future. My last project in phase two was another quick talent house um, creative infight for the poster artwork for IT chapter two. The brief actually asked for um, a development of a daytime poster and a nighttime poster so that they could promote them at different times around the world globally. Because of the short amount of time I had, I actually just created one initial poster instead. This was my first idea and first response that I created. This was my final submitted piece. Um, it's actually based on a scene in the first film where the clown opens his mouth and it creates all these uh, death lights, which are, is quite a symbolic thing. It's a real thing that people believe in. Um, and then I featured the house that they revisit in the second film, which we can see from the trailer, um, within the mouth of uh, the clown. For my final phase, I was a part of the Creative Enterprise Centre's pop-up shop which this year featured in Neil Street Covent Garden. The shop was open for five days um, in Christmas time so the busiest period ever to have a shop. The shop took around six months of development. My artwork was selected. You had to be invited to be a part of this pop-up shop. Um, and I was successfully selected along with these other artists. For six months we attended all of these workshops and talks as you can see I have listed. All these talks and workshops really helped and impacted the sort of development of curating your own shop. As a group we were all given individual um, topics and tasks to help towards the curation of the shop. I was head of social media so I um, scheduled regular posts, uh, promoted posts, um, sorting out every by invitations um, that were dedicated to the events team. We had an event that went on each day to encourage a different audience of people. I got to hold a live art night where I did some live screen printing where you could pay for a shirt and either watch it be printed by me or you had the opportunity to get involved and screen print it yourself. Overall, this was probably one of the most challenging um, phases and projects that I've had to do. For this shop, I didn't just sell my current merchandise. I thought I would add a sort of special um, Wootopia, which was the name of the shop, um, merchandise that was limited edition and only used for this event. So I screen printed my own Wootopia design on a variety of charity shop bought clothes. My initiative behind this was to encourage people to recycle their own clothes and create something new out of something old. I had the opportunity to work as a print technician at the uni and I still get to continue doing that um, for workshops and events. This really helped develop my confidence and my skill in um, creating my own screen printing. Um, screen printing is something that I really want to keep on developing and getting better and experiment more with. These were some images of my outcome. Here is a shop front picture of Wootopia in Neil Street and to the right is my display. 
I was also put in charge of curation along with another um, ex-illustration student, Lulu. Um, me and Lulu both um, had to measure the shop and make sure that everyone had enough space um, so that when it came to the day of moving, we could move in, set up uh, quite quickly. Our curation idea was that we had a sort of section to ourselves, but our artwork was also integrated with everyone else's work so that like the exhibition that I saw, all the artwork wasn't too separated from each other. We all had a piece of each other's work sort of close by or um, sort of mixed together because it created a more, um, more harmony in the shop. We got promoted by people such as Life magazine and Covent Gardens magazine, um, which we then reposted through the social media, which really brought a lot of audience in for that short period that we were there for. Here are some more images of the shop setup. Here are some images from the screen printing night that I held. And finally, an image of our takedown. I really found this an incredible experience. Um, we had to also learn about profits and gross profits and outcomes and incomes, which I had some sort of knowledge from my um, from starting my merchandising this year, but this really took it to a more live and present moment of what it would be like running a shop. It was really interesting to see all the insight behind um, what it is like to run a shop. And that is all for my professional engagement and enterprise submission.